Hello everybody, you are listening to Alfred's Business News Updates. Alfred's Business News Updates is brought to you by Alfred and Friends. Alfred and Friends is a global conglomerate that owns and invests in an ever-increasing number of companies all around the world. For more information on how you can invest in Alfred and Friends, go to alfredandfriends.com. The updates I'd like to give you now is on the new Juliet's Toxic Masculinity app. Unless you've been under a rock for the past number of days, you've not heard or seen the new Juliet's ad that basically attacks men. You know, this idea of toxic masculinity that's actually is an attack on traditional masculinity. It really needs to stop and really needs to end. And Gilles just went full retard and insulted masculinity and men for being men, basically. And the concept of boys for being boys, boys being raised to be tough and everything good about men. It actually puts all men in the box of sexual predators and it put all men in the box of actually bad people, you know, who abuse women and abuse people and uh, the reason for a lot of all the problems in the world, if not all the problems in the world. What people need to realize is that the rich hang out with the rich, the rich are friends of the rich and companies are owned by the rich as in the larger ones and companies that are not owned by the rich will eventually be owned by the rich when the poor or middle class who own them becomes successful you see so it is not surprising that you find a situation where companies are making the same executive decisions and companies lean in the same direction when it comes to politics and social issues and their personal belief systems, you see, because these are people who socialize in their own world with each other. A lot of them live in gated communities with each other. A lot of them go to the same schools with each other. You see, there is that bond and growth between them. And that is how ideologies are often uniform between them in such a class. So it's no surprise that Gillette is on this bandwagon. Nike previously did that with the Colin Kaepernick decision, you know, and sided with Colin Kaepernick against what the majority of Americans want. They went with their leftist belief system. You see, it's funny that companies like this, like Google even does the same. Companies like Google, they don't put the customers in the front line. They put their beliefs in the front line and they believe that the customers are cow and no matter what they will return to them no matter what they do. You know, this is sad and this is unfortunate, but this is actually what um goes on and shows how they feel about customers. There is also the matter of lobbying the rich by non profit organizations. As you may know or may not know, a lot of the way they are pushed by non-profit charities that actually have ways to socialize with them, to interact with them, and to get into their good graces for them to sponsor their causes and beliefs. You see, in the same way, a lot of non-profit organizations, LGBT organizations and leftist organizations have schemes and programs to really go into different areas and get their loyalty, to go into Hollywood and get the loyalty of actors, to go into the world of the rich, and I'm talking about businessmen and top class investors, and get them on board, you know, to market their ideologies, their beliefs, their political stance to them. And when they are organizations that are standing strong and that have millions behind them to continually milk the rich and to inject their ideologies into them on a constant basis not to mention that the schools that the rich send their kids to teach the same ideologies so a lot of the 
rich are actually products of a schooling system which has injected them with all these leftist ideologies and leftist agenda. So we now see this kind of situation where they all think one way, they all follow their leader, they all live like Nazis following what their leader tells them to do. You know, their leader being the deep state's ideology, you know, whatever ideology that the deep state has put out to control them and to move them in the direction that they want them to move, you know. So you see, these are actually machines that are in place that control the way society thinks. When you actually control the way the rich think in a nation, you have a great deal of power because you can control the future of that nation. You Because now you now actually control the finances. You control the minds and the ideologies of all those who have great financial wealth, which will be used to steer the nation and to drive the nation in whatever direction they wish. You see, so these are things that you should also look at and consider and this is why Christians should have deep plans and serious um, schemes to get into these places we must have plans to get to the rich you know to win them to teach them about Christ and also to make sure that it is our ideology that wins because whoever owns that market, whoever owns the world of the mind of the rich, whoever controls the minds of the rich, controls a great um, world of power. And what they say goes, you see, they have the power like they have used to eradicate free expression of Christianity from certain segments of society, which they have used the world to do. They have the power to impose on people how they wish them to live their lives like you can see the drive for abortion and Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood is funded by I would say before Trump it was funded by taxpayers money as in the killing of um, innocent children and when it even comes to the idea of free health care for women free health care for women is actually sexist and evil because you exclude men you cannot pick out a gender and give them free health care for life at the expense of men what about men are we not people too you know so men are not getting any free health care but women are getting free health care and i'm talking about the other programs that planned parent who says that they um, offer to women outside of abortion you see so when you look at this this is a concocted plan and this is a matter of series of planning that leads to us a particular end goal. You see how things have progressed, how the, the gay agenda led into transgender acceptance. And now it has gone into gender neutrality and the multiplication of genders. You know, when we were pushing for the gay agenda, it was just a matter of gays and straight people. But now the spectrum has gone so wild. It is over 200 different genders and sexual identities and preferences and all the rest that it has gone crazy. That was the plan from the beginning, but people did not see it and it was not revealed that that was the plan. The future would actually include bestiality and pedophilia. Right now, pedophilia is frowned upon by the same people and the same spirits that has made things go this far with the LGBT and transgender is also wants pedophilia and also wants bestiality and those things will in the future be introduced you know there are actually already current moves towards that people saying that they shouldn't demonize those who are pedophiles and saying that is actually a sexual disorder you see this is how it starts that is the same thing they did with the LGBT community as in with homosexuality they took it away from being something that was listed as a mental disorder you know and from time to time it's changed to now it has been so accepted and it has been pushed forward as something that if you're against you're a bigot and you could even go to jail you see just because of you believe something is wrong 
you know, these are the days the Bible talks about. You know, they are not even talking about criminals who actually steal, rob, or kill. They are talking about putting people in jail because of their beliefs, because they disagree with a new and wrong idea of marriage. You see, this updated idea and definition of marriage is total nonsense. Let me remind you that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, in spite of the fact that Sodom and Gomorrah had homosexual marriage, they did not have... Sorry, in spite of the fact that um, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah had homosexuality, they did not have homosexual marriage. You see, because even then, they saw that it was insane. They did not do that, the marriage aspect, because there's actually there's no point to it. You see, and, you know... The fact of the matter is that in this modern day, the push for homosexual marriage is just plain demonic and it's straight from Satan. And it was actually the only way that Christians would stand up and fight against something. Because, you see, people being homosexuals, these modern day Christians would not fight against it. They would not stand up or rise against it, you know. But Christians needed to be demonized. And the whole point of marriage, when you look at marriage as a whole in America, the stats of people who are getting married are greatly decreasing because you see with everything falling apart and this is what happens when you depart from God when people depart from God they depart from wisdom they depart from all common sense they turn their back on all common sense they turn their back on all knowledge they turn their back on all truth so all they are left with is darkness that is why you see relationship lasting shorter and shorter days and you see more and more foolish decisions that are being made and catastrophic decisions look at the people that are even elected into office, like um, Alexandra Cortez. This is somebody that doesn't even know the branches of government. How did she pass elementary school, you see? And then she now has a silly famous quote that um, it's more important to be morally correct than factually correct. What kind of nonsense is that? And this is the person that they put in charge of the finances in Congress. You know, this is insane. You can't do this kind of thing. Her plans are always plans that are idiotic and that relates to the eminent destruction of America. But this is somebody that people keep voting for. So you can see the whole stupidity of what America has become now and a lot of people in America look at the people who hate President Trump when you think about it it doesn't make any sense President Trump has done more for America than any other president President Trump has done more for minorities and black people than any other president yet he's the most hated of all it doesn't make any sense people don't do their simple research they just watch CNN or go off what they are being told by silly people who also don't do any research because they want to hear lies they want to hear falsities you see you know you you can twist certain things in a way that it sounds how you want it to sound however a clear mind that looks into it who is interested in truth and who possesses truth can see through all the smoke screens and see the truth behind everything you see but the way the world is now President Trump can do something like um, he goes into black neighborhoods and increases investments and jobs. And what does MSNBC say? MSNBC says he's only doing it to um, get black votes. And then silly black people believe that. And then say President Trump is a terrible person, he's a racist. But this is somebody that has gone into your communities to create jobs and to create tons of investment opportunities because he has now made it in a way that is actually more profitable and you actually have less taxes upon you for you to build and for you to create investment opportunities in such poor black neighborhoods. You see, he left others. You know, this is actually unfair to the white community and this is actually unfair to other communities. He has focused on so much on helping blacks. And yes, what does he get hate? You see, because a lot of all these blacks who still hate President Trump don't see through the smoke screen from MSNBC and CNN. And you know, a lot of people just want to believe that the world is against them and that 
racism, racism, racism. So when you point somebody at somebody and say racism, you know, they are most likely going to believe and keep on believing in spite of the fact that the facts say otherwise, you know. So that is actually something that um, you must look at. The issue of Juliet doing this toxic masculinity and, and insulting men is quite sad. And majority of the mainstream media supports it. And Twitter and Facebook and all of that are pushing forward ads and posts and videos that support the ad and that attack those who are against the ad and saying that why is an ad offending them? Why won't an ad offend men? You know, when a company that makes shaving sticks for men insults all men and puts them in the box of the box of sexual predators and actually the ad seriously attacks white men and puts black men as the saviors and that is something that you see in all ads nowadays a lot of company ads when you watch them the black guy is the smart one and is the cultured one is the intelligent one and the white guy in the ad is an idiot is uneducated or is a wimp you see and they always now do a flip on things and make sure that the man the white male cannot do any housework or is not good with housework even though he thinks he is but the woman is actually better sometimes even the white woman and there are now a lot of ads that ingeniously puts this concept of a white woman preferring a black man to a white man you see all these tricks and all this madness you see this is the reason why a lot of people are turned off by the mainstream media and a lot of people will vote for President Trump and people who think in that lane, people who see these things, you see. This is the reason why this will continue. And you know, you must understand that as Gillette has done this and as all these other companies are doing this, this is a serious problem because when things go awry and everything is about to crumble when if America is about to fall the rich and the wealthy executives of Gillette and other companies who are creating the bedrock for all the disaster will not be included you know if Americans are dying if it's the poor and average Americans that will die first not the executives of rich companies who can easily shift to another country you see and who never had any true allegiance or true love for America in the first place a lot of the money that is made by executives who are often now diversified goes back to the country of those people in spite of the fact that they become American citizens. I mean, look at China. Where would China be if there was no America? China would still be the way it was in the days of Confucius, perhaps, you know, most likely. China would be like the poorer parts of India. As a matter of fact, you know, but Chinese students, I give them credit for that. Unlike students from Africa, Chinese students, when they learn in American schools, they go back and build. They go back and reproduce what they build. You see, before America built skyscrapers, China didn't think in that direction. You see, but when students went and learned in the American system and from the American schools, they went back to their country and started building. You see, and you can see what China is today. A lot of all the early manufacturing companies in China, look at how they learned from American companies and American culture and its manufacturing culture back then. And that is actually what they reproduce in China, which sadly Africans don't do. When Africans travel to US and America and they learn, they either stay there or if they come here, they do not reproduce. You see, they do not reproduce what they saw there. And that is a big and a serious problem. Now you can see that China is actually competing with America and it's actually currently ahead of America in certain areas. You see, because of this um, matter of learning from the Americans, learning from their advancements and doing the things they see there in China. There is now a clone of Silicon Valley in China. 
But why is there no clone of Silicon Valley anywhere in the continent of Africa? You see? China is only a country, it's not even a continent. Why is there no clone of Silicon Valley anywhere in Africa? However, a lot of African wealthy and children of politicians have gone to MIT and foreign schools and wonderful tech schools and have gone to Silicon Valley. Why can't they come back to Africa and reproduce it? But you see, in any case, the Chinese and even the Indians, but more so the Chinese, do that. They go back and they learn. They go back and they reproduce what they see in America. They learn how it is built in America and how things work and they carry themselves and their talents and their abilities that they have gained from American education as of then and then reproduce in their own countries. They also send back a lot of money and it is money that is used for growth and the increase of their economy. You see, so that is something that you must really understand. A lot of these companies that are in America and their executives who mostly also retire for the ones that are foreign that stay here in America, they often retire and go back to their countries a lot of the time. But you see, that also means their money and their intelligence and their plans and their hearts was always in their own country. These people cannot be trusted to make decisions that are for the best interest of America. But sadly, America has grown into a nation that does not care about its best interests, but believes in accepting snakes from all over the world. You know, with the expectation of domesticating snakes and expecting the snakes to love them and to be beneficial to them. You know, but snakes and crocodiles are not in the business of making friends. They are just in the business of being themselves and they can only be expected to be themselves, you see. So that is something that you must keep in mind. On this topic now, our friend and friends will be going into manufacturing, shaving sticks and men grooming products as well as women's grooming products, you see, to go after Jealous. And also, our friends and friends must spread and cover a vast array of all the products and services that a lot of all these companies are offering. You know, and for you to find out more about how to invest in our friends and friends, go to our friends and friends as well. Make sure you contact our friends and friends. Get in touch with us. Talk to us. We'd like to talk to you. You know, it's very important so that there is actually going to be a giant company that can actually represent the people, stand for the people, and fight against these giant companies that actually have the plan of Lucifer on their minds, you know. So, that's it for today. Thank you and God bless you.